Today, we're taking a closer look at something that's been shaping human lives for thousands of years, the environment. No, I'm not talking about recycling or saving the whales this time, though that's important too. I'm talking about how the physical world around us, the climate, the soil, the land itself, decides where we live, how we live, and even what our cities look like. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about climate. Think of the difference between a tropical rainforest and a freezing tundra. Where do you think people would rather live? Exactly. Climate plays a huge role in determining where people settle. Places with mild weather, plenty of sunshine, and enough rain are pretty attractive because they make farming easier, life more comfortable, and the risk of extreme weather lower. That's why you'll find big populations in places like the Mediterranean or parts of Southeast Asia. Great weather makes for great living conditions. But not all climates are created equal. In areas with harsh climates, like deserts or polar regions, you'll find fewer people because it's just harder to survive. In those places, settlements are often small and scattered, or they rely on special technology to make life bearable. Next up, soil. You might not think about dirt much, but it's actually a big deal. Rich, fertile soil is like gold for farmers. It's what allows crops to grow and livestock to thrive. That's why some of the earliest human settlements popped up in places with super fertile land, like the Nile River Valley in Egypt or the plains of Mesopotamia. Even today, agricultural settlements are usually found in areas with good soil, because without it, farming just doesn't work. On the flip side, areas with poor soil tend to have fewer people living in them, or those people might focus on different types of work, like mining or forestry, instead of farming. Now, let's chat about topography, the shape of the land. Mountains, valleys, and plains all influence where people settle and how they build. Flat plains are like settlement magnets. They're easy to build on, easy to farm on, and great for transportation. That's why you see so many big cities in flat areas. But what about mountains? They can be tricky. Steep slopes make building difficult and farming even harder. But mountains also offer protection and often have valuable resources like minerals. So, you'll find settlements in mountainous regions, but they're usually more spread out and might focus on mining or tourism rather than farming. Speaking of building, the physical environment also affects the type of buildings people construct. Take areas prone to earthquakes, for example. In places like Japan or California, you'll see buildings designed to sway and absorb shock waves rather than crumble to the ground. Or look at places with heavy snowfall, where roofs are often steeply sloped so snow doesn't pile up and cause them to collapse. It's all about adapting to what the environment throws at you. And then there's water, the ultimate game changer. Water is life, and it's also transportation, food, and industry. That's why you'll find so many major cities near rivers, lakes, or coastlines. Think of London, New York, or Shanghai. These cities grew big and powerful because they had access to waterways, which made trade and travel easy. Even smaller towns often spring up around water sources for irrigation, drinking, and industry. Without water, settlements just can't survive, which is why you won't find many big cities in the middle of deserts unless there's a man-made solution like the aqueducts of ancient Rome or modern-day pipelines. Finally, let's talk about natural resources. These are things like minerals, oil, and forests, and they can shape entire towns. Ever heard of a resource town? These are places that spring up because of a nearby natural resource. Think of a mining town in the Rockies or an oil town in Texas. People flock to these areas because of the jobs and money the resources bring in. But there's a catch. When the resource runs out, the town can struggle to survive. It's like a boom and bust cycle that's happened over and over throughout history. So there you have it, the physical environment, whether it's the climate, the soil, the land itself, water or natural resources, plays a massive role in where we live and how we live. Next time you look at a map or drive through a city, think about all the ways the world around us has shaped the places we call home. That's all for today's geography lesson. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and remember, every place has a story and the environment is often the first chapter.